I gotta set my uh, I gotta turn my uh, signals on. You cannot add a SIM card to the current account. Every account must have its own unique SIM card. So that's uh, going to be a bummer, but I do have a workaround as, it is, as things pop up, problems pop up. You'll look for workarounds, and I did find a workaround. I just have uh, uh, some more uh, work to do on it. Uh, this is the uh, down point. The turning here is that it gets very busy, and well, one way is clear, the other way is well busy. So we're waiting in line. So I did find a way to get across. our conversation here and this is what we're doing because these are our notes uh, and of course, of course the mundane a part of our notes as well because we do it's a, the hardware uh, hardware upgrades and is, is a necessity that they're necessities you have to upgrade your hardware in order to do more work well, that being said the question was on the uh, and I was sort of thinking about it for a while the question was in terms of the comments, and as guy is, <laughs> he's, a, he's, he's obviously a gamer. He's given himself the handle uh, uh, Nestos uh, from Nestopheles. No, Nestos. Nestos. Yeah, it's actually Greek. Nestopheles uh, is uh, a demon. And he appears in his, uh, several games and comic books, so this guy's like, So he's probably heard of or done some work on Hegel, but what happens is, a lot of times, if people aren't doing analysis, they don't do the analysis of Hegel, or don't have the qualifications, and that, means, that doesn't mean uh, he's not smart enough. It just means he hasn't seen the right things, as I said before. If you haven't done calculus in quantum physics, then you're not going to understand why uh, Leibniz and Newton are important to the equation here. 
and how uh, Voltaire fits in with the uh, walk. And so what happens, Hegel, because he's part of the equation, is actually on the Gnostic side of things. Even though he comes through as a philosopher, he's actually on the uh, metaphysics of uh, uh, Gnostic side of things, rather than as on the science side of things. And so what happens is that Hegel has come out with a, 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 a this is the one thing that most people uh, know of Hegel in terms of what they primarily use, and it's his Hegelian dialectic. It's the antithesis, antithesis and the thesis battle it out to produce a synthesis, and that produces progress. And this is used by a number of different groups for their understanding. Hegel isn't necessarily a necessity. The concept of thesis and antithesis was there actually from Socrates. Socrates used the arguments of the thesis and antithesis. And what happened is that in the time of Hegel, is a lot of the texts from Greek, from Greece, were coming in. So he would have read up on a lot of the philosophers like Socrates, Plato, and you can actually see this in the in the book, uh, the Dialogues of Plato, which is actually an observation of uh, Socrates, and what you'll see in there, what you'll, uh, is, is the so-called Socratic method of argument, which is not asking a question with another question, but rather it is the argument of antithesis. Someone proposes a thesis, or, or someone else proposes a thesis, and you have the opposing thesis. What do you do? You argue the thesis, uh, the sort of you argue the antithesis of your own thesis uh, to the point where you get the uh, person proposing the thesis, the, your opponent, you get them to back down by disagreeing with the, uh, the thesis that you're proposing. In other words, you show them, you show them that the, the errors within the thesis, and a lot of theses will have contradictions and points that were not necessarily considered. And so what happens when you argue the antithesis from that perspective, you take the perspective and you bring it out to its nth degree. Like you have Lionel LeBron arguing uh, for moral relativity. The antithesis to this argument would be would be pe pe the allowance of pedophilia based on the argument of moral theory, and this is the this is the this is the problem that Lionel has, is that the argument of pedophilia, based on moral theory, isn't actually correct, because if if moral morality is relative. then you cannot state categorically that pedophilia is immoral. And again, I'm using this, again, that Lionel doesn't seem to understand this. Terms in Greek are not necessarily literally, are not, are not necessarily literally taken. There is what's called an implicit definition, where you have to use the context of the uh, sentence in order to understand what was actually being said. In other words, in terms of, in terms of how the dictionary is. And so in many cases, you'll have, for a person who is absolutely violent, children, and this could be all forms of violence, and you talk about the person and say, nah, pedophilia. And you're not meaning that the person loves children. 
is a it, 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 net bit net bit feel is, is a term of sarcasm. <laughs> but the thing is, these understandings, these these sort of minutiae understanding, which is often called syntax, is lost in, in, in translation. Some things just simply don't translate from one to the other. And this is one of them. And then th th this is what I'm saying. If you have to sit down and study translation and get it horribly wrong. Simply because the sentiment of what was being said is lost in translation. So you, know, you, you have in translation, not only do you have to get the words right, but you have to get the, the, the sentiment, you have to get the uh, sort of cultural understanding, if you will. That has to be brought into effect. So you have a number of factors that can cause a, a sort of a mistranslation. And this is sort of why on LeBron's issue with pedophilia is that there's a mistranslation there and doesn't understand that pedophilia can be used in the term of sarcasm. It's not is not a literal definition of pedophilia, but rather a sarcastic or an implicit definition of pedophilia. And of course, you're getting all this for free. Where if you want to go to Lyon LeBron, get this detail, he's going to charge you for it. Your choice. And he meanders like I do. He doesn't necessarily stay on one topic. He, he brings in a variety of different topics. Is that for the reason? I watch him because I want to see what's going on with the uh, with his uh, friends who are up there. What are they thinking? Well, you know, what, 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 talk about the the people like Alex. figure out what's going on with that guy, right? <laughs> Lionel knows him. He's got a number of pe people who are high up there. There, You want to sort of figure what's going on that this is the guy to watch. Because he'll, in some ways, in some form or another, flood it out. Well, the 24th of July, about three o'clock in the afternoon, so 15 hours into the, into the 24th day of July. And we're off for a rain block. For a rain, uh, rain block. They're yeah, riding in the rain. Not that bad of a rain, but as far as you move forward, uh, the speed of the rain picks up. brings up an interesting question that I had once in physics as an undergrad. Uh, to sit down and work out whether or not you get uh, water in the rain by running or by walking. Well, this kind of answers that question. By walking, when you're standing still, you notice when you're standing still, the rain isn't that significant, it's not that much. But as we move forward, at a higher speed, the rain picks up. So we're testing this question out, and here's the answer. You get wetter. So there's a larger volume of rain falling, even though you're moving faster. And 
noise. Oh, it's thinking about my LeBron's question. Because he's in a situation now where he sees his world and net coming to an end. And he doesn't see anyone being effective at stopping what's going on. But the thing is, if the person if a person on the opposite opposite side, as I had talked about this before. A person on the opposite side has compromised his position to the opposition, right, to the one he's opposing. Then there's nothing left to do except capitulate because you've comp already compromised your position. And this is the problem with being generic. With generic, you actually haven't chosen anything. You've sort of chosen not to fight. And so this is this is where a lot of the situation is, is that the people who are, are sort of you know pushing things forward are not generic. They're, they they have a particular side. They have a particular view, and they're pushing their particular view. It affects those primarily who have no particular view. Who within the generic. So if you sit in the generic, you're, you're, you're a person who has a, a, a generic view, in other words, no particular point of view, then you're going to be mostly affected by this because uh, you're going to be pulled in one direction or the other as the two sides battle back and forth. Remember anti antithesis and antithesis and thesis are battling it out. This is the Hegelian dialectic, or so-called. Um, as this plays forward, uh, people in the middle are the ones who are most affected. The question comes now, if you're a person who's not in the middle, you have a particular opinion, what next? Or what could say, what then? And that's a difficult question to answer because it really depends on what your position is. For Lyle LeBron as an intellectual, the intellectual world is over. Because we reach the end of the line for humanism. This is it. This is the end of the line of humanism. The thing is, you say, oh, no one could have predicted this. We Dostoevsky. Dostoevsky predicted this. He gave you the outlines for what was going to happen to humanism in the in, in, in the book uh, uh, well, Crime and Punishment. He lays it out specifically in Crime and Punishment. It's in his other books, particularly the, the, the 88 and The Possessed, that you begin to understand why, why he calls the, li the liberal left idiots and possessed. It's because they don't have... They're, 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 they're without logic. There is no logic to explain to them. They're, and then that's why he calls them idiots and possessed. They, they represent the demon legion who coming out of the possessed man asks to go into a herd of pig, pigs and Christ is benevolent and allows them to go into the herd of pigs. And these herd of pigs go wild and end up running over a cliff into the, into the sea destroying themselves. Well, this is the situation we're in now. See, Dostoevsky was very well aware of the Bible. He was aware of, 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 of the Old Testament and the New Testament. So, you see his references are very specific. And ironically enough, it, it, it is possible that, uh, that George Orwell, who would have been aware of the Bible as well, understanding or having read Dostoevsky, but I'm not sure about this, but this is sort of... You know, why does he choose to call, and then he's the one who coined the frame communist pigs. That's from his, his book, Animal Farm. Um, that's a reference to uh, this, uh, the, 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 the gospel uh, of the possessed man and, and, and the demon legion going into the herd of pigs. And, and it goes right back to Dostoevsky. So there is, there is a sort of 
an understanding of this, and this is this is how you begin to sort of gain a sort of direction, is by looking for a different various different understandings, and this is in many cases an issue of cross reference. How does one issue relate to another, or how does one thing relate to another? If you're not talking about issues, you're talking about just general things. How are things related? And that's cross referencing. But again, it is difficult to, to remain uh, calm, to remain resolute. But when there's so much chaos going on around you, the, 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 the tendency is to panic. Well, this is the situation right now. We're in fundamentally a global panic. And of course, you say, well, this isn't logical. Of course, it's not logical. The panic isn't logical. Panic is an emotion. That affects us. And has no logic. It, 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 and the thing is, more often than not, if you look at things carefully, and you do your observation, you do observational psychology, you'll be, you, that's basically crowd watching. <laughs> people watching. Uh, you'll find that people more often than not are not logical. They, they are illogical. That They are emotional. And so, something like a panic, the fear, will easily control them. And overriding any sense of logic. They'll may know and be able to read and say, oh yes, yes, yes. There's no particular big deal. But try getting over that fear. Try resolving that fear. And that's another thing entirely. I do enjoy even the rain clouds are nice. I like the small the pattern of small rain. The new uh, waterproof system is basically a baggie over a camera. Uh, I think the baggie should work pretty well. I haven't done the editing. I haven't got that editing. We're really far behind on our editing. Uh, this, uh, the, the, the storage edition, the storage upgrade, and the network upgrade. Uh, took too long. But anyways, that's not that's neither here nor there. That happens. Uh, there are always issues that pop up, and so Lyle started getting into some of the spirituality. The thing is, is that. Uh, There are a lot of spiritual choices out there. There's as many spiritual choices uh, as you can imagine. I mean, you know, look, at look at all the different gurus there are. And different choices of denominations, different churches, different this, this, and that. Different, you know, <laughs> do you go get your aura cleanse? How, how much are you going to spend on crystals? You know, if you're a person who believes in crystals and the power, of, the healing power of crystals, how much are you going to spend on that? These all become sort of interesting factors 